What's up guys, it's Ash here and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys, we've got some custom tactics and player instructions for the 4-2-3-1 formation. But just before we get into it guys, please be sure to drop this a thumbs up as it does really help me out. It's team of the season, so if you guys need any coins, make sure you check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're fast, cheap and reliable. And if you use my code REMA, you can get yourself a nice 5% discount. Okay guys, so starting off with the custom tactics for the defensive style I like to have this on balance the reason I have it on balance is because it gives me the greatest control over my defense where when I want to press I'm able to press and then when I want to drop off and be a little bit more passive I'm also able to do that the other settings don't really allow this as they're very one-dimensional so I like to go with balance so I can kind of pick and choose what defensive style I want to use and when moving on to the defensive width guys I'm using this on 35 this is so we can primarily defend in a nice narrow and compact shape which means we're going to be able to block off all those attacks through the middle and it's going to prevent our opponent from being able to just run right through us the reason i don't like commit to a really low width is because it's still important to maintain some natural width so we can reach out to the wide areas in case an opponent tries an attack down the wing moving on to the depth guys i'm using this on 60 this is because it's a really nice balanced defensive line basically uh, we don't want to have the depth too low because then we're constantly getting pinned back with a super low line and we're always going to have like loads of pressure on us. And then on the flip side, if we have the depth too high, uh, we're going to get caught out up the pitch quite a lot and one through ball will kind of undo us and that's not good either. So I kind of go for something in between with 60, so it's neither too deep nor too high. Moving on to build up play, guys, I have this on balance. The reason for this is it allows you to mix up your attacks, it allows you to be as varied as you want and it is just a lot more consistent what I mean by this is for example if you use slow build up and then you decide you want to speed it up all of a sudden you can't really do that because you're on slow build up the same with fast build up if you want to slow it down can't really do that because you're on fast build up but when you're on balance you can play slowly you can play quickly you can mix it up you can do whatever you want basically so I think balance is the most consistent one to use moving on to chance creation guys I suggest using direct passing this is because it's by far the most meta option in the game basically your attacking players will like bunch up against the defenders so you can do like these really overpowered 1v1 isolation plays uh, players also make the extra movements in the box so you can get off that extra pass to guarantee those goals the other settings don't really allow this and I do think direct passing is the most important setting uh, for the current state of the game now moving on to attacking width guys I'm just using this on 40 at the moment the reason for this is I don't want my width to be like crazy low otherwise my players feel like they're sat on top of each other and that's not too effective and on the flip side I don't want it to feel too wide otherwise I might as well just use the 4231 wide variation so I kind of want it to be like nice and balanced which is why I have this on 40 uh, moving on to players in box guys I have this on five this is so I can get some players into the box to create those chances but at the same time I don't overcommit the entire team to the point where I'm getting count attacked uh, as for corners and free kicks these are both on one because there is a set piece routine that I use which requires these to be on one link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen now moving on to the plays you want to use guys I'm just going to make some suggestions on the types of players I would use in certain positions because some people ask for that uh, so anyway starting off with the striker I suggest going for a nice well-rounded striker this is because there's only one striker in this formation so where you could get the balance between between two players in a two striker formation for example by having like a creative striker and then a clinical finisher striker you kind of have to get that all in one in the 4-2-3-1 because there is only one striker so I suggest going for somebody with like uh, that can shoot on either foot somebody that's got decent dribbling good pace physicality basically a bit of everything because uh, you're going to get the best out of them that way if you use like a like a finisher striker like Holland or Kane you're very limited to just playing through balls and stuff like that that. So I suggest going for a nice well-rounded player as it will make your life easier in my opinion. Moving on to the central cam guys, it's very important that you use somebody with pretty good creative ability.
ability uh, because this is the main playmaker in the team. You're not going to want somebody that is like slow and clunky without any creative ability, otherwise you're going to struggle because you're putting somebody that's not creative in the most creative role in the team. So just ensure that your cam is good, otherwise you might struggle a bit. Moving on to the right cam and the left cam, I suggest using like wingers. The reason for this is because they're going to be like the main outlets in the team. Although this formation strictly doesn't have wingers, these players can act like them at times and they do get into the wider areas at times. So it's important that these players have good pace. I would suggest decent skill moves, obviously good dribbling and shooting as well. Basically just make them really good winger style players as it will make your life easier. Moving on to the left CDM, I go for a more defensive minded player. This is somebody that's going to stay back, break up the play and ensure that we're as good defensively uh, as possible. So I suggest somebody with a medium high work rate if you can get it as you get the maximum contribution in defense and then this player is not too bothered about going forward. Moving on to the right CDM, I like to go for a more box to box style player. This is somebody that is going to attack and defend. So I suggest somebody with a high high work rate if you can get it as you get the maximum contribution in both attack and defense defense but just ensure that this player has a nice well-rounded card moving on to the left back my more attacking fullback sorry I like to use a more attacking fullback here this is somebody that's going to actually go forward and contribute on the attack for me uh, so yeah moving on to the right back I like to have somebody that's a little bit more defensive somebody that's going to stay back um, so I just like to have that balance between the two fullbacks where one player is more attacking and the other is more defensive as for the center backs and the goalkeeper these just need to be the meta players, uh, the fast players, the strong players, the medium high work rates basically. There's not too much to say about them. Moving on to the player instructions guys. On the striker I have him on stay central and mixed attack. We have him on stay central because we don't want him drifting off into the wide areas. He is our striker so it is important that he does maintain a primarily central position otherwise he's not going to be where we want him to be. We also have him on mixed attack as I feel like you get a lot more out of the player this way. If you put him on getting behind he'll always make the same one dimensional runs but if you have him on mixed attack he gets more involved in the build up and I just feel like you get a lot more out of him for the central cam I just completely leave him alone he's got a bit of a free roll so I kind of just don't want to restrict him I'll let him do his own thing uh, so yeah I don't change him uh, for the right cam and the left cam I have him on comeback on defense and get into the box for cross we have them on comeback on defense so they will sit next to the CDMs when we don't have the ball to make sure we're good in defense both narrowly and widely at the same time super important and that you have a good defensive shape uh, and we also have them on get into the box across so they're not hesitant to get into the penalty area when we are in that area uh, if you have them on balance crossing runs they can be very hesitant and they don't do a lot moving on to the left cdm the more defensive minded midfielder we have them on stay back cut passing lanes and cover center we have them on stay back because we obviously don't want him going forward he is defensive we have him on cut passing lanes so he's always looking to break up the play and then we have him on cover center so he does cover those central areas. Moving on to the right CDM, the more box-to-box -box player, we have him on default settings and cover center. We have him on the default settings because we don't really want to restrict this player all that much. He's got a bit of a free role in the team, so we kind of let him do his own thing. The only important thing is that we have him on cover center, so we just defend those central areas. Moving on to the left back, my more attacking fullback, I have him on balanced attack and overlap. We have him on balanced overlap because the 4 2 3 one although it's one of the wider narrow formations still quite a narrow formation so we want to add a, like a wider option when we're going forward so we're able to do that with, with a fullback by putting them on balanced and overlap because the overlap run type means they're going to be making the overlapping runs to add extra width to the team moving on to the right back my more defensive fullback I have him on stay back and overlap we have him on stay back because I want at least three defenders back at a time to make sure we're as defensively sound as possible but if I do want to send him on a run forward he'll make the overlapping runs to add extra width as for the center backs and the goalkeeper these are on the default settings and I do not touch them guys but yeah they're my custom tactics and player instructions for the 4231 if you have enjoyed or found this useful please be sure to drop us a like sub to the channel if you are new and don't forget to turn on notifications and with all that aside guys I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you all in the next one later guys peace